Can anybody here solve this equation? Or at least know how to solve it? If it is written in total differentiation, solving this is straightforward. It requires only one trick. Okay? The trick is everything on the left hand side here are function of z only, right? Pressure does change with respect to z. Rho and g are basically constant. So on the left hand side, it is function of z. What about on the right hand side? Mu is constant. Vc here is function of r only. So this is function of r only. If you have one side of the equation change with respect to z and the other side is changing with respect to r. However, these two sides are always equal. What does it mean? If you allow the left hand side to change with respect to z and allow the right hand side to change with respect to r, it should never be equal, right? It should not be equal at all time. But according to this equation, these two sides are equal. That means both are not changing with either z or r. Both are constant. Right? If you can see this, then solving is straightforward. However, remember this trick here cannot be used if this one is partial differentiation. Because if it is partial, then mean, it means pressure here is changed with, with respect to both Z and R. Here, changed with respect to both Z and R as well. It, they can be equal. Okay? So I'm going to say the constant here is equal to C0. Then I can split this equation into two parts. The first part equal to Z0. You can integrate them easily. Just move this one to the right hand side and integrate it. You get pressure equal to Z times C0 minus rho GZ plus another constant. In order to determine this constant, you will need boundary condition. Boundary condition is supposed to give you pressure at one specific location. Do you know pressure at any position here? Of course you do. At z equal to zero, let's call pressure here P0. If z is zero, that means C1 is equal to P0, right? The other boundary condition is at Z equal to L. Pressure here is called PL. If you plug C1 back into the original equation, now you have C0 only. You can solve for C0. So solving for C0, you get PL minus P0 divided by L plus rho g. And again, we can split them, change them into modified pressure, just like what we did in example from chapter 2. That would give you modified pressure P0, I'm sorry, PL, minus modified pressure P0 divided by L. That's a constant.
Now we can start on the second half of the equation. Okay. Just rearrange equation, you get this form. And then you can integrate it. You have everything inside here. Equal to R squared over 2 mu CO plus C2, another constant. All right? And you can treat CO here or T C0 here as a known variable because we can change them, this term, into pressure already. So now for this equation, you need only one variable, one boundary condition. And that would be something like this. The boundary would be at r equal to lambda r dvz by dr equal to zero because the velocity profile is maximum at that point. Okay? By using that, you can solve for C2. And then the rest would be the same as what we did earlier. All right, any question? Probably I will have one for you. Can you do it? I'm going to give you two more examples, okay? In, not today, of course, not today. For this chapter, I will give you two more examples so that you will be more familiar with how we use the equations. But notice that equation here can be used without constructing any shell. You don't need to understand the direction of flux at all. You can just drop terms and integrate it easily. So personally, I think using equation is more convenient. It's much more convenient, much more accurate. However, there's a drawback in using this equation. If you do not drop the term correctly, you can end up with two choices. First, totally incorrect answer. Or secondly, your equation would be too long to be solved. Sometimes it would be too complicated to be solved. And sometimes it requires some trick just like this to solve the equation. Okay? All right, if there's no other question, that's it for today. See you on Friday.